Let us go.
I read the purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> this, song was, this song was sung by Narottam Dasatakura, a great devotee and acharya in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, the disciplic succession coming down from Lord Chaitanya. Narottam Dasatakura has written many songs which are recognized as authoritative by all Vaishnavas. He has sung these songs in simple Bengali language, but the purport, the deep meaning of his songs, is very significant. In this song he says, Goranga Bolite Habe Pulakashariya. One has attained the perfection of chanting when 
<coughs> as soon as he chants the name of Lord Goranga, who initiated the Sankatan movement, at once there is shivering in his body. This is not to be imitated, but Narottam Das Thakur is asking, when will that opportune moment come to, to us? When there will be shivering of the body, as soon as we chant Lord Gorang's name. And after the shivering, Hari Hari Bolite Nayani Babe Nir. While chanting Hare Krishna, there will be tears in the eyes. Then he says, Ar Kabe Nitai Chandir, Karuna Hoi Be. We are all asking about the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Nityananda is supposed to be the original spiritual master, so we have to approach Goranga, Lord Chaitanya, through the mercy of Lord Nityananda. What is the symptom of a person who has achieved the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda? Narayam Das Thakur says that the symptom of one who has actually received the causeless mercy of Lord Nityananda is that he has no more material desire. Ar kabe nitai chandir karuna hoibe samsara vasana mor kabe tucha habe samsara vasana means desire for material enjoyment. And Naratam Das wonders when it will become very insignificant. Of course, as long as we have bodies, we have to accept so many material things, but not in the spirit of enjoyment, but only to keep body and soul together. Naratam Das says further, Rupa Raghunatha Pade, Haibe Akuti. When shall I be very much eager to study the books left by the six Goswamis? Akuti means eagerness. Because Rupa Goswami is the father of devotional service, he's written a book called Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, in which there are nice directions on devotional service. These topics are also dealt with in Chaitanya Charitamrita and other books, and we have given the summary of those directions in our book, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya. One has to learn of the conjugal loving affairs of Radha Krishna through the teachings of these six Goswamis. Narottam Das Thakur directs us not to try to understand the conjugal love of Radha Krishna by our own endeavor. We should try to understand this Yugala purity, conjugal love, under the direction of the Goswamis. As long as the mind is too much absorbed in materialistic thought, one cannot enter into the kingdom of Vrindavan. But Narottam Das Thakur says, Vishaya Chariya Kabe Shuddha Shuddha Habe Mana Kabe Hama He Rabha Shri Vrindava. When the mind is completely purified, being freed from material anxieties and desires, then I shall be able to understand Vrindavan and the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna. And then my spiritual life will be successful. Shilanatam Das Thakur Ki Jai the mercy of Lord Nityananda, Ki Jai. So today and Thursday, both days are holidays, <clears throat> so we'll be having some extra classes and each day, personally, I'll give two classes. Uh, and the subject matter which I'll be trying to talk about is the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So, Lord Chaitanya, of course, is famous as the father of the Sankatan movement, and we are Gaudiya Vaishnavas, which means we are followers of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is the Yuga avatar. But as Srila Prabhupada himself said here, in this purport to the song we sang, that Lord Nityananda is the original spiritual master. So we have to approach Goranga, Lord Chaitanya, through the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So Lord Chaitanya, of course, is the main person, really, out of the Panchatattva. And we, generally, we focus our attention on Lord Chaitanya, that's a fact. And that's quite correct. He is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. And Lord Nityananda is appearing 
as his servant. But as Prabhupada says here, if we really want to be able to approach Lord Chaitanya, then we need the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So I was thinking it would be nice that, seeing we normally focus, as we say, more on Lord Chaitanya, that we could spend a little time focusing a little more on Lord Nityananda. And just hopefully appreciate him a little bit more. Not that we don't appreciate him, but try to increase our appreciation of him. And I think you will find this very enlightening, actually. So we'll have one class now, and we'll have another class this evening about Lord Nityananda. And on Thursday, I am, we're, we're going to repeat this program, <clears throat> at least this schedule. And so we'll also try and say a little bit more about Lord Nityananda on two occasions then, yes? We'll try and have two sessions also then. It is a little experimental, I must admit. Uh, it's a dry, sort of a dry run for a course I'm going to be giving in America in a few weeks, if I make it to America. So, please be a little tolerant of all the shortcomings. I won't say if there are any, but I'll say of the shortcomings, because there will be. But hopefully we can relish some of Lord Nityananda's pastimes. We'll discuss some of his pastimes. And we'll also discuss some of the philosophy of Lord Nityananda and the importance of worshipping Lord Nityananda. So we set the scene by singing that song, very wonderful song by Naratam Das Thakur. Now we'll go more deeply into the subject matter by reading one uh, excerpt from Chaitanya Bhagavat, <coughs> written by Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur, one of our great Acharyas. <coughs> He's an incarnation of Srila Vyasadeva. He's the incarnation of Vyas in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Of course, we know that Lord Nityananda, he's also an incarnation of Lord Balaram. He's an incarnation of Lord Balaram. So he's a very extraordinary person. So now to get a little deeper into the subject matter, I'll just read this little excerpt. It's from, I think, the Majjalila of Chaitanya Bhagavat. So, Rindavan Das Thakur says, Lord Nityananda is very close and dear to Lord Chaitanya. These glories of Lord Nityananda are sung in all the Vedic literatures. If one does not recognize his identity as a devotee of Lord Chaitanya, then that person may be respected by the whole world, but he's worth no more than a straw to the learned Vaishnava assembly. Lord Nityananda introduces himself saying, I'm Lord Chaitanya's servant. He's always in this mood of a servitor. And only by his mercy can one develop love for Lord Chaitanya. All difficulties in spiritual life are overcome by worshipping Lord Nityananda. The greatest hope I always cherish in my heart is that Lord Chaitanya is the Lord of my Lord, Nityananda. O oh Lord Chaitanya, kindly offer me the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, who as Lord Anantashesh is holding up the, the whole universe. I am able to sing the glorious life and pastimes of Lord Chaitanya because of my love and attachment for Lord Nityananda. My Lord Nityananda is always desiring the best for the world. Lord Nityananda knows no other designation other than being Lord Chaitanya's servant. And only through serving Lord Nityananda is one eligible to become a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. As by Lord Nityananda's grace I can know Lord Chaitanya in truth. Similarly, to fully comprehend the truth about devotional service, one must also receive the blessings of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda is very dear to all the Vaishnava devotees. 
Everyone can receive from Lord Nityananda entry into the path of devotional service. Somehow, if by chance someone disregards Lord Nityananda, then Lord Chaitanya himself condemns that person to eternal suffering. The full glory of Lord Nityananda is very rarely known. Even the great yogi and exalted Vaishnav, Lord Shiva, does not know his unlimited potencies. So, this is Vrindavan Das Thakur. He's a great devotee and he's in our Sampradaya. One of the great associates of Lord Chaitanya and one of the associates of Lord Nityananda. Actually, he's a disciple of Lord Nityananda. Of course, we know that Srila Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srila Prabhupada chose that book as being the most significant, actually, of the biographies of Lord Chaitanya. There are a number. Uh, Krishnas Kaviraj Goswami in Krishna Leela is one of the gopis, one of the manjaris, and Lord Chaitanya is Srimati Radharani. So, actually, Krishnadas Kaviraj, in one sense, is in a better position to understand and express the, the deep mysteries of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. Vrindavan Das Thakur is Srila Vyasadeva. He's also very qualified to do these things. And he, in fact, wrote this Chaitanya Bhagavata. It was the first biography of Lord Chaitanya. However, there are differences between Vrindavan Das Thakur and Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. Main difference is that Vrindavan Das Thakur is a devotee of Lord Nityananda. And he's also, he's actually a combined person. Two people in one body. One person is Srila Vyasadeva. The other is one of the cowherd boys. Which particular one of the cowherd boys I forget but one of the main cowherd boys. And the cowherd boys, of course, in Krishna Leela, they tend to have, in many cases, a close affiliation with Lord Balaram. Of course, they also are very close to Lord Krishna, and some of them have most intimate relationship with Krishna. But generally, there's a tendency for them to be close to Lord Balaram. And Lord Nityananda is none other than Lord Balaram. So we find Vrindavan Das Thakur uh, glorifies Lord Nityananda a lot. And this is one typical example. There, there are many actually in Chaitanya Bhagavat where he just focuses in on Lord Nityananda. And he's praying to Lord Chaitanya that the greatest hope I cherish is that you, Lord Chaitanya, you are the Lord of my Lord, Nityananda. So, of course, our business is not really to become, you know, to put an emphasis on Lord Nityananda. Actually, our emphasis, really speaking, is on Lord Chaitanya. But we shouldn't be neglectful of Lord Nityananda. <clears throat> Therefore, it's nice to just absorb some of these subject matters. So what we'll do now We'll discuss a little bit more from the philosophical side. Then this evening we'll discuss one or two pastimes of Lord Nityananda and some of the implications of them. And then on Thursday we'll also do like that. Discuss some of his pastimes and some interesting things we can learn from them. <clears throat> so, as Srila Prabhupada said, Lord Nityananda, he is the original spiritual master because he's Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram is the original spiritual master. There are different reasons why Lord Balaram, or we could say Lord Nityananda, is the original spiritual master. One of the main reasons is that Lord Nityananda is, like unofficially, the brother of Lord Chaitanya. If we take it in the case of Krishna and Balaram, then Lord Balaram is like more directly, more obviously the brother. But in the pastimes of Gornatai, even though they are born in different places at different times and there's quite some differences in those respects, but in relationship they're brothers. 
in relationship they're brothers they're acting as brothers so who can be closer than the brother Lord Nityananda is the first expansion of Lord Chaitanya as Lord Balaram is the first expansion of Lord Krishna so who is more intimately linked than the first expansion he's actually part in fact he is not different from Lord Chaitanya so in that way he's in such a good position to understand Lord Chaitanya and through that understanding through expressing his understanding he acts as the original spiritual master particularly in regard to the worship of Lord Chaitanya so he's a very important person we can't approach Krishna without going through the spiritual master so we can't approach Lord Chaitanya without the mercy of Lord Nityananda therefore we don't worship Lord Chaitanya independently we always glorify Gaur Nittai Nittai Gaur Hari, Nittai Sachi Sutta it's always Gaur and Nittai they're especially merciful especially merciful and the particular feature of Lord Nityananda is that he is even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya sometimes he's selective tonight we'll read about Jagai and Madhai Lord Chaitanya was going to kill Jagai and Madhai right on the spot without giving them a chance they, they were trying to beg forgiveness from Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya was not interested he was simply going to kill them but then Lord Nityananda begged on their behalf he begged Lord Chaitanya that you please be merciful so it said that the demon that Lord Ram would kill Lord Krishna would not kill but he would give his mercy to and there is an example I didn't have time to look it up I'll try and look it up uh, and there is an example of one demon who Lord Ram killed but a another demon in Krishna's pastimes who did something similar to what that demon was, demon was doing in Ram's pastimes but Lord Krishna spared him and gave him mercy so the demon that Ram would kill Krishna would give mercy to the demon that Lord Krishna would kill Lord Chaitanya would give his mercy to there are numerous examples of that one very very good example is the Kazi anyone know who the Kazi was in his previous lifetime Chand Kazi Kamsa and what did Lord Krishna do he killed him but as Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya gave his mercy to the Kazi even though his followers they came in that huge Sankatan party and there were hundreds of thousands many many very big Sankatan party so they came and they started tearing the whole building the whole property to pieces all the trees were smashed down everything was broken and they were going to set fire to the place the building itself and completely destroy it and kill the Kazi but then Lord Chaitanya decided to be merciful so he then delivered the Kazi and the Kazi became a devotee or something like a devotee and he became a devotee and even to this day his uh, family members friendly to devotees actually quite friendly so anyway that demon who Ram would kill Krishna would give mercy to that demon that Krishna would kill Lord Chaitanya would give his mercy to therefore Lord Chaitanya is known as Patita Pavana the deliverer of the most fallen Karun avatar the most merciful avatar Mahavadanyaya avatar the most merciful most auspicious avatar but those demons who Lord Chaitanya would kill Lord Chaitanya would give his, uh, Lord Nityananda 
would give his mercy to. And we'll read about that tonight. Not only would he free them, deliver them, but he gave them Krishna praying. Virtually on the spot, by his mercy. So Lord Nityananda is especially merciful. And it's very nice. We should always, when we worship Lord Chaitanya, we should also worship Lord Nityananda. And we should remember this and we should pray to Lord Nityananda that you are so merciful. And I'm so much in need of mercy. So you please give your glance upon me. So now we read, Srila Prabhupada was saying, although it's stated in, in the song actually by Narottam Das Thakura, very important philosophical point about the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Prabhupada says that everyone is talking about the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So merciful. And what is that mercy? Well, the first installment is that he delivers one from material desire. This is the first inst installment of the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Here in the song that we are singing, Narayana Das Thakur says, Ar kabe nitai chandir, karuna hoibe, samsara vasana mor, kabe tucha habe. So, where is it? Samsara vasana means desire for material enjoyment. Actually, in a very literal sense, samsara vasana means, samsara of course means the cycle of birth and death. And vasana means the impressions that exist within your heart, within your consciousness, which keep you in samsara. That is samsara vasana. Those deep impressions of your karma, your desires, your material consciousness. So it, could, it can be taken to be more than just the specific desires you have, but like your whole deep tendency to be attached on the material platform. So that samsara, vasana, more. More means my. So he's saying that my deep attachment and affiliation since time immemorial with the cycle of birth and death. Kabe tucha habe. He's asking when. When will I get the mercy of Lord Nichananda? And kabe tucha habe. Tucha means that these, this samsara vasana, this material desire, this deep rooted material attachment will become insignificant of no, less than insignificant actually it will have no significance when will that time come when my material attachments and my involvement in material life will become nothing and it can just be thrown away this is the implication of the word tucha it's, of, it's so small it's nothing practically and you can just throw it away just discard it at a distance so how will that ha happen ar kabe nitai chandya karuna hoide he's asking when will lord nichananda give me his mercy so that my material desires will become so insignificant i can just take them and throw them away and they'll be gone so, this is really like on our level, the first or a very significant installment of the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Of course there are other installments, and as we see with Jagayan Madai, it, it, those installments go up to the level of giving love of God. But, how are we going to get love of God while we still have this samsara vasana? This deep-rooted attachment to material existence, identification with material life, and so many material desires. Well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. One devotee once said to Srila Prabhupada, they were walking or driving somewhere in Hawaii, 
and there was a very beautiful tropical sunset the sky was all lit up with beautiful colors and looked very nice materially and the devotee said to Srila Prabhupada oh doesn't that sunset look nice and Prabhupada said to him that however nice you feel that sunset to be that is how much that you'll have to stay in this material world this is indicating how you're attached to this material world so to go back to Godhead to go get back to Godhead one needs to become purified one cannot just remain situated on the platform of contemplating or engaging in sense gratification and think that yes I'm going back to Godhead no problem not like that <clears throat> we have to become free from sense gratification not just sense gratification but this samsara vasana this deep rooted affiliation with material existence but how are we going to do that are we just going to just do it just take our hearts or take our minds and just kick these things out but of course we have to try we have to try to be self-controlled and like that but actually we need mercy we need mercy and here we're hearing that we need the mercy of Lord Nityananda particularly just like we know when uh, Mother Yasoda was trying to bind Lord Krishna in the Dhammadar Leela she was taking rope, piece of rope after piece of rope tying them together but it was always two fingers too short despite her best efforts it was two fingers too short so those two fingers one of them represents her endeavor her own sincere desire and the other represents mercy in her case of course it's Krishna's mercy but we've been hearing that Lord Nityananda is more merciful than Krishna and she's even more merciful than Lord Chaitanya who's already more merciful than Krishna so those two fingers then we must endeavor that has to be there and then we need mercy and when we get that mercy well the next verse of that song states Vishaya Chadiya Kabe Shuddha Habe Man Kabe Hama Hey Rabba Sri Vrindavan Sri Vrindavan so Vishaya Chadiya Kabe that if one is still holding on to desire for material enjoyment then well he's asking actually when will I become free from material desire and when I'm actually able to do that then I can enter Vrindavan we were discussing the other day that I don't know about here but particularly in Durban many of the devotees there's a phenomenon and there has been a Sunday they want to go to Vrindavan they would like to go to Vrindavan or to India and of course Vrindavan is one of the prominent places to go but you can't just enter Vrindavan by, by purchasing a ticket you may be able to enter Vrindavan by purchasing a ticket but it doesn't mean that you've actually entered Vrindavan on the spiritual platform you may well just be situated on, situated on the material there's like a material covering over Vrindavan and when you're situated on the material covering then you see that it's a dirty place you see that the people there some of them or many of them even they're a little difficult to get on with and problematic they may try to cheat you and they have some bad habits and you may think oh they're meant to be bridge buses they're meant to be great devotees but there's one of them smoking a cigarette and so it may all be a little difficult it will be if one is on that material covering it will be a little difficult to relate to all of this so we found actually that some of the devotees who went they came back worse they came back to Durban worse than they went actually 
And in one particular case, because we won't mention any names, but one particular case, while he was in Vrindavan, the fact that he was on the material covering and he hadn't really entered spiritually became so painfully obvious that he was going around complaining that this place is like this and this place is like that. And he couldn't stay. He didn't want to stay. He just became overwhelmed by that material side of it all. So, of course, to enter Vrindavan is very nice. To actually enter Vrindavan. But if one is still attached to sense gratification, it will be very hard to enter Vrindavan. One will main, remain on the material covering and then one will make offenses and it will end up being detrimental and one will come back worse. So we don't want to be like that. I want to speak about going back to Godhead in the long run. I want to speak about developing love for Krishna. So, Vishaya Chadiya Kabe Shuddha Habe Man Kabe Hama Hereva Kabe means when. When, oh when, will I give up sense gratification? Shuddha Habe Man, when will my heart become pure, my mind become pure? Kabe Hama Hereva, and when in that condition will I be able to enter Vrindavan? So, we should, we should understand like this. And he's saying that by the mercy of Lord Nityananda this may happen. His whole song is Goranga Balite Habe, Pulaka Sharia. That when or oh when will symptoms of ecstasy come? And the answer is next verse, when I get Lord Nityananda's mercy. Then I'll get free from this samsara vasana. I'll get free free from Vishaya, then I can come to the level of experiencing ecstasy in Krishna consciousness, then I can enter Vrindavan. So this is only going to come by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. That's the only way. So therefore, this is like the basic message of our first little session here. We, we have to really remember Lord Nityananda and pray to Lord Nityananda. Don't leave him out. Don't leave him out. As Vrindavan Das Thakur says, that somehow, if by chance, someone disregards Lord Nityananda, then Lord Chaitanya himself condemns that person. We are, we are devotees of Gornatai. Just like here we have our deities, Gornatai. Of course, in Durban we have only Lord Chaitanya. But that's because he's on the same altar as Radha and Krishna. Otherwise there would also be Gornatai. And in our temples all around the world, you always find Gaur and Nitai. Because you can only really approach Lord Chaitanya through the mercy of, of Lord Nityananda. So when we chant these names, Gornatai, Nitai Gauranga, or when we chant even the whole Panchatattva Mahamantra, there are no offences. There are offences, ten offences in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. We have to be very, very careful of those. But when we chant the names, Gornatai, there are no offences. So you should do like that. You should regularly chant the Panchatattva Maha Mantra, reg regularly chant the names of Gaur, and regularly chant the name of Nitai, Lord Nityananda. In this regard, Ashi Prabhupada, in commenting on this song, Prabhupada said a, a nice thing. He said that spiritual advancement is only possible when one is convinced that this material world and material happiness is of no value. This con conviction is very much necessary. And this conviction comes by the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So if to have as a, an aspiring devotee, if one is feeling like that, then one should call out, Nityananda, call out for the mercy, Gornitai, Nitai Goranga. One should call out for that special mercy. So if one focuses one, one's mind very nicely like that, 
on Lord Nichananda and Lord Chaitanya, then one will get that mercy and one, you'll, one will see that one's heart will become cleansed. So to close our little session, first session here, I'll just read uh, another little bit of glorification from Vrindavan Das Thakura. It's very nice, so please listen carefully. Lord Nityananda is famous for inundating the universe with love of God. Lord Nityananda is the original devotee of Lord Chaitanya. His tongue is the abode of Lord Chaitanya's glories, vibrating incessantly the sublime pastimes of Sri Gaurachandra. One can obtain full devotion at Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet simply by worshipping Lord Nityananda. All glories to Lord Nityananda, the primeval Lord. It is only by his causeless mercy that the glorious pastimes of Sri Chaitanya manifest in one's heart. And by the grace of Lord Gauranga, one can become lovingly attached to Lord Nityananda. So we have to worship both, in other words. All obstacles and misfortunes in life are destroyed as soon as the knowledge of the truth about Lord Nityananda dawns upon one. Those who desire to overcome the material whirlpool and drown in the ocean of devotional service should worship Nitai Chand. Many praise my Lord Nityananda, saying that Lord Nityananda is like Lord Brahma, while others say he is very dear to Lord Chaitanya. I hear various opinions about him, that he is a sannyasi, or a humble devotee, or an erudite Vedic scholar. People discuss without inhibition and stop at nothing. Some go to the extent of saying that Lord Nityananda's connection with Lord Chaitanya is not intimate. But none of these opinions can affect me at all. I simply pray that Lord Nityananda's lotus feet remain impressed upon my heart eternally. After I have tried repeatedly to invoke this good judgment in all people, if some sinful people continue to criticize my Lord Nityananda, then I will kick them in their heads to save them from disaster. Very nice. <laughs> that person who is not critical of Lord Nityananda and who is steadfast in his spiritual practices will certainly attain the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. I intensely yearn to see the lotus feet of my Lord and Master, Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Chaitanya. Lord Nityananda is my absolute master. By taking shelter of his lotus feet, let me worship Lord Chaitanya. I greatly desire to study Srimad Bhagavatam in Lord Nityananda's presence. This is my humble submission eternally. All glories to the Supreme Lord, Sri Chaitanya. You are fully independent to act as you wish. You can give me the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda or separate me from them. I pray that you, my Lord Chaitanya, be merciful to me and grant that my whole heart and soul remain fixed at your lotus feet and at the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Whoever hears this narration with devotion is crowned with the most precious gem of success in love of Godhead. Lord Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are my heart and soul. <coughs> so this is Vrindavan Das Thakura. Any questions or comments at this point? Kailash. Maharaj, can you understand like, that the mercy from Lord Nityananda is received through one's Guru? Yes. It's received through the Guru and one gets access to it from the Guru. Like we can glorify Lord Nityananda by the mercy of the Guru. You know, yeah, we, meaning we can directly glorify Lord Nityananda 
by the mercy of our spiritual master. We should follow what I mean. So, yeah, I mean, the two concepts in one sense are not different, but there is a little different difference that we can, you know, we can chant Hare Krishna. How do we chant Hare Krishna? By the mercy of the spiritual master. But when you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're chanting Hare Krishna, isn't it? Yeah, that's what you're doing. So, you know, it's like one and different. So we can glorify Lord Nityananda and get his mercy, chant his holy names. That we're doing that by the mercy of the spiritual master. So it's not like we're doing it independently. And also it's a fact, just like along those the lines that you're suggesting, that uh, we, if one worships one's spiritual master, then Lord Nityananda will be pleased with that. Yeah. So, all these things we have to do, it's like we do them simultaneously. That when you're chanting Hare Krishna in a, the proper way, then the spiritual master is present and that chanting is going on by the mercy of the spiritual master. But still, one is actually chanting Hare Krishna in a direct sense. That is one specific activity. So, yeah, we have access to Lord Nityananda by the mercy of the spiritual master. But when we're chanting the names of Lord Nityananda or praying to him for his mercy, you know, then we are connected with him by the mercy of the spiritual master. Uh, yes, mercy, we were mentioning the other day, we need mercy. So we should get as much as we can. <laughs> so I'm not suggesting that we should neglect anyone's mercy by putting forward the subject of Lord Nityananda's mercy. I'm just saying that let's take advantage of that also. Yes, let us take advantage of it. Because, I mean, generally the devotees are not so much aware of Lord Nityananda. Not that much. They're, they're aware, but not so much. So it's nice to become a bit aware. Any other comments or questions? Um... I've often thought of this when I'm going to uh, ask about, and you just sort of confirmed it in the class, that many times we chant, we chant monsters to glorify Lord Chaitanya, and sometimes you're not include Lord Nityananda. Mm -hmm. So we just clarify that we shouldn't do that. Well, like it's not exactly that, but you shouldn't neglect. Like we chant Jai Sachinanda and Jai Sachinanda. Dr. Vinod Thakur used to do that and he recommended doing it. But we shouldn't neglect. I mean, emphasis may be there on Lord Chaitanya because he is the Yuga avatar and that is the teaching of our Sampradaya actually. But we shouldn't neglect Lord Nityananda. So, uh, I mean, we should include his glorification as much as possible. So we chant Jai Satyananda and Lord Hari and we should also Oh yes, yes, we should do that, yes, we should definitely do that. Don't neglect Lord Nityananda. He is considered a devotee, like the dearest devotee or certainly one of the dearest devotees of Lord Chaitanya. So if we approach Lord Chaitanya through his devotees, then we'll get Lord Chaitanya's mercy. So. Yeah, we worship Lord Nityananda like that in order to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And we'll get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya by worshipping Lord Nityananda. Any other comment or question? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like that. The thing is that what access have we got to Krishna consciousness? You know, like by upbringing and our previous cultivations? None. But how have we got Krishna consciousness? 
through the mercy particularly of the spiritual master that's really the key with the mercy of the spiritual master uh, one really gets access to Krishna consciousness so in that sense the spiritual master is considered like a manifestation of the mercy of the Lord because he's acting as the ambassador of the Lord he knows the Lord's desire but the Lord which is to deliver the conditioned souls but the Lord himself generally doesn't involve himself so much in doing that he leaves it up to the devotees so the devotees then they're even more merciful than the Lord actually the devotees are more merciful in that they extend themselves to the conditioned souls so in this way they're like manifesting mercy so much mercy of course ultimately we know they're doing that not independently but they know that it's the desire of the Lord so therefore they can be considered to be like ambassadors or they're carrying the mercy of the Lord the devotees don't feel that oh I've got my mercy and I'm giving it but they want everyone to get Krishna's mercy or Lord Chaitanya's mercy or Lord Nityananda's mercy so uh, in that way the spiritual master may be considered Sakshad Hari Twena I think the term is correct term not different from the Lord or a type of uh, incarnation of the Lord in a sense Prabhupada would say like that uh, in the sense that they're carrying the mercy and giving the mercy of Krishna as it is and giving the message as it is yeah therefore we worship the spiritual master that's our practice Yeah. See, Shaktavesh Avatar means it's expressed in the CC Kali Kalera Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vinanahi Tara Pravatan that the religious practice for this age is Sankirtan but if you don't have Krishna Shakti then you can't spread the Sankirtan movement Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Pravatan if you don't have that mercy you can't spread so wherever that means then that wherever the Sankirtan movement is being spread it's being spread on the basis of that Krishna Shakti so that person who's spreading is empowered by Krishna Shakti and that's what Shaktivesh Avatar means so, so therefore whoever is really spreading bona fide Krishna consciousness is a Shaktivesh Avatar there may be different levels according to the potency but it's only on the basis of the Krishna Shakti that the Sankirtan movement spreads so Prabhupada he was definitely Shaktivesh Avatar he spread the Sankirtan movement so much and so did Srila Bhakti Siddhanta so did Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and all these great Acharyas because they are empowered and that's what being a Shaktivesh Avatar means to be endowed with the Lord's potency so you also saying the present at the time the Lord is also Shaktivesh Avatar? yeah to whatever degree they are empowered yeah because Shaktivesh means that one has been endowed with the Shakti of Krishna Krishna consciousness can only spread through Krishna Shakti or through like people who are